Hi Taurus, welcome to your October 2017 overview reading. In honor of Halloween, which is my favorite holiday, um, I have decided to do a spread called The Vampire's Kiss. And um, so a lot of this has to do with like coping with the shadow self. A lot of us are doing shadow work right now um, during this eclipse cycle. And so I figured this would be a really great time to do this spread and it's it's themed. I love themes, so got to do it. And um this is really it's it's uplifting. It's not like dark and scary, so I just want to clarify that. Um so it's really about coping and working through different things. And then I'm not going to do a timeline. I'm going to do something a little bit different for the reading today. And I also have a partnership manifestation class that I am launching at the end of September. And so if you want to get in on that, make sure you stay tuned at the end. And okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the monthly cards. Paulina Cassidy, we have patience. Nurture the seeds of patience and reap the rewards of personal achievement. Okay, so there's something you're waiting on. And it is about waiting for the right opportunity to arise before taking action or pulling the trigger on something. So just make sure that you are feeling things out before you take any type of permanent action. Okay, cross your T's, dot your I's, make sure you're taking the necessary actions and precautions to get yourself a good, a good outcome. Okay, and now Doreen Virtue, we have Oceana, take action, you're in touch with your truth in this situation. What was I just saying, you guys? And you need to trust your gut and lovingly assert yourself. Yes, 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 trust your gut. So it's this balance of yeah, you're getting ready to take action, but you really need to make sure that you're being patient for the right opportunity and circumstance to show up. So it's a delicate balance. It's like, I do think that you will take action in October on whatever is resonating with you here, but it's also about trusting yourself, trusting your intuition, and just paying attention, okay? So... We have, what should I give myself over to? Now, don't think of this as giving yourself away or like, you know, giving all of your energy to one area, but I'll explain. So work. So there's a certain level of action, yes, that needs to be taken in order for you to yield the results. So really what, what you're giving yourself over to is just trusting that the actions that you take and that the work you put in will have an equal output. Um, and that may not seem comfortable or, you know, you might be moaning and groaning. Taurus has been like in work, work, work mode, like since the moment I started reading or putting these readings online. So make sure that I, I would not be surprised if I saw some themes come up about, about rest and relaxation and nurturing yourself. But right now... You have to turn yourself over to, okay, I just need to do this work now so that I can um, get my desired results. Okay, and now we have what happens when I abandon rational thought. Nine of coins. This is so interesting that I'm seeing this here because what it looks like is there's a tendency to overthink overanalyze, overdo it. With everyone else, it looked like, oh, you're just trying to check out or you aren't able to fully step in or there's some whiplash. What this looks like is actually listening more to your intuition and less to your pros and cons lists. So it's kind of like when you ab abandon such an intense rationality, you're able to connect more with your intuition in order to get, you know, so, because you want to be in this position surrounded by all these fruits and coins and birds and things. So, to get there, it's kind of like there's a certain level of trusting your gut and trusting your intuition while stepping back away from the intense rationality that you might be pushing away manifestations with. 
Okay, so now we have who wants to kiss me or who is sending you a lot of love right now. Okay, there could be a Leo reference here with the strength card. Um, this is also someone who's a big supporter. If you think about who has been by your side, who just really gives you great advice and reminds you to take time for yourself, who supports you? Um, so if it's not a Leo, then it's just that person who's been your cheerleader for quite some time. That's that's who's sending you a lot of love and affection right now. It could be a partner, but it might not be. It might be a parent or a sibling or a cousin or a friend. So keep that, keep that in mind. Send them a thank you note for all that they do because it looks like this person's totally on your team. Okay, now we have how do I embrace my darkness? What this means is how do I cope with the shadow self? How do I nurture the shadow self so that it works for me rather than against me? Judgment. Okay, I want to, I really want to clarify this. King of Wands. Okay, so <clears throat> what this looks like is <sighs> there's something here. I think that there's a lot of Tauruses who might have certain feelings but don't necessarily speak up about them all the time or that's something that is in practice regularly. So it, it doesn't necessarily come naturally, even though there's a lot of judgments that are around certain situations and a lot of f intense feelings. And so what it looks like is actually being more assertive is how you are able to cope more with your shadow self or with um, your internal darkness rather than shoving it in a closet if you have thoughts and feelings but rather expressing a certain level of them either directly to the problem or to a friend who has your best interest in mind okay like like a safe person to communicate with okay so now we have what am i on this is the fifth card what thrives in darkness so what now what this means when I interpret this is more like, what exactly do you need to let go of so that you can become, you step into your light more? <laughs> you need to let go of the grief, the pain, the, the tormented mindset is actually getting in your way. So it's um, let go of your negative expectations of situations. What did they say? Like, keep your wits about you, but um, don't expect doom and gloom from situations because that's what's happened in the past. Let go of that. My God, turn a new leaf because that you're just going to attract more of those negative situations the longer you expect them to happen. It's like, yeah, if you're looking for the negative in every situation, it's going to magnify. So make sure that you are figuring out a balanced way to make sense of your expectations and what you want to cultivate for yourself. Okay, so now we have what thrills me. Page of Rods, it looks like um, when you're looking at a new project or getting started on something new, that's really, really exciting. It's like, yes, I get to draw up all my plans. I get to figure things out. I get to like be really enthusiastic about um, my next big project, my, ne my next venture. These... Um, it's just all about this new, fresh, exciting energy that you can pour yourself into something new. Okay, because it's like, look at this guy. He's he's looking like, hmm, I'm going to expect this, inspect this. I'm going to figure it out. Okay, now we have what increases immortality, a.k.a. what helps with your health. Nine of rods. Okay, so this looks like you just have to move forward. Let the past be in the past. Let the future be in the future. And just keep working towards your goals in the present. It is very cut and dry. Like, it's just whatever health goals you have for yourself. It's kind of like if you had a bad day yesterday, if you 
um, if you ate a donut or you had a cigarette or you had one too many drinks, move on. It's in the past. You already did it. Don't beat yourself up. Move on. If you forgot to work out yesterday, get over it. Like that's seriously what's coming through for this is leave it behind and move forward so that you can, you know, take care of yourself better moving forward rather than beating yourself up that you had a bad day and then continuing to have bad days from there. What lives forever? So this is coming through for you like ideas, but I'm going to clarify it. So like what lives forever is the new projects because they're these are both pages so that would make sense that they're somehow related in terms of there's infinite possibilities and um, things that you can manifest into the physical three of cups so it looks like you have enough resources to keep this going for a lifetime you know I um, someone was asking me the other day, like, what, oh, so what if this life, you know, that you have mapped out doesn't work for you? Or what if your job just comes to a screeching halt and it doesn't work out? And it's like, well, I would just start another business. Like, that's what I've been doing since I was 19. I'm just going to keep starting and stopping creating businesses. Um, so that's just kind of what's happening here is it's like, oh, if it doesn't work out, you just move on to the next and the next and then the next and then the next. So there's that infinite structure. And with the three of cups, it's kind of like you're always supported. This is the reminder that you have that support from the astral and from divine source and from the people that you're connected with to make whatever you want um, to make happen. And then we have what action do I need to take? Ten of Cups. So this actually looks like you are being called to ask for help, connect with family, however you define that. It's not necessarily blood relatives, but connect with your family, your friends, the people that you feel supported and loved by. Um, make sure that you are acknowledging them and that you're asking for their support because they have a lot to offer you right now and it's going to help you move forward. So even if you just need someone to be kind of a sounding board for you on your new ideas or for this project that you're going to get started or like which school should I go to, whatever it is, make sure that you are asking people for help. Okay, and now I'm going to do, instead of a timeline, I just want to do a three card pick. Uh, this is your growth period, and then this is going to be your environment for the month. And then I'm going to pull a relationship card too, whether you're coupled or not, kind of what you're dealing with in your romantic life. So go ahead and pick a set of cards that are calling to you. If you want to mix and match, that's fine. This is your reading. Okay. All right, spread number one. We have sun's rays. Okay, so this is really... Um, Gosh, it's it's like you're totally turning something over and it's like the load has been lifted. So this looks like you're just totally able to step into um, prosperity, abundance, health. It's kind of like things are really clearing up because if you think about light cleanses so much of what we experience and it nourishes us. So sun's rays kind of play into that idea of being nourished fully in every way you could imagine possible. The environment for you is eight of rods or eight of wands. So what I'm seeing here is like there. The, with the lightning bolt, it's kind of like that's the action that you have to take. And there's a certain level of focusing in on that one thing that you want to make happen and just prioritizing that. 
and understanding that you're going to need to give that more energy until it grows and then you can recalibrate later. And in your romantic relationships, we have Four of Cups, so it looks like there's just, there may be an offer being made that you're not really keen on right now or you're not interested in taking, whether it be from someone that you're in partnership with or not. Um, or maybe someone is like, oh, hey, that date was really cool, I want to see you again, and you're just like, nah, I, I just have other things going on. Um, if you are in partnership, then it looks like you're kind of going to have to communicate to your partner, like, look, I need to make this happen. It would be great if you could support me. And again, we go back to that idea of calling on the people who care about you, who support you, and who are there for you in order to um, achieve your goals. Card no or spread number two, we have endings. So something is coming to a close internally. This is your growth period. It could easily be a relationship, uh, certain expectations around what you're making happen, um, the endings of a project or a business or, um, you know, a, a circumstance. There's just complete closure of something and so in the environment it looks like ace of wands so this is something is new is coming out of this ending and this is like a long time coming and so with the endings it's like there's new birth new hope circumstantially for you to move forward and in your romantic life we have the wheel of fortune so it's kind of like things are coming in things are leaving um there's just like some cycles nothing is really uh, nothing. A lot of people like to say that the Wheel of Fortune is good things coming in. But the way I see it is kind of like anything could happen. Um, you know, you could meet the love of your life tomorrow. You could go on like 40 dates this month. You, It's like, it's, it's all up to God, really. You know, if you look at it like that. So, the Wheel of Fortune is kind of like that anything could happen, uh, but if you like to look at it like, oh, I have positive things coming into my life, whether I'm in partnership or not, you can look at it that way too. Um, I just see this as there's a certain level of unpredictability like, ooh, what's going to happen next? We don't know. Uh, so that's the energy of the Wheel of Fortune when I read this. And for spread number three, we have loudspeakers. So we have some communication. This looks like you stepping into yourself fully and being able to, on a grand scale, being able to communicate, this is what I want, this is what I need, this is what I'm going to make happen, these are my plans. It's just ultimate communication in terms of what you want in this lifetime. In the environment, we have six of wands, so there is something positive that is happening around you, and it's coming from a period of um, not so great circumstances or a not so great environment. There's now a shift in that, so keep your eyes peeled for this and make sure that you're communicating to the universe, God, divine source, whatever you believe in, that there are good things coming into your life, that you're affirming the things that you do want. That's the key thing. And then in your romantic life, we have Ace of Swords. So it looks like there's something, there's new initiation in terms of ideas and expectations about what you want. So if you're dating, it's kind of like, you know what, this type of person that I keep attracting isn't working out for me. And if you are already coupled, then it's like this style of communication or these thoughts and ideas we have around partnership aren't working for us anymore. And there needs to be some type of shift in that. So it's just um, like reevaluation and coming into new ideas about what you want to make happen. Okay, that's all I have for the reading today. Thank you so much for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. I appreciate every single one of you. 
If you are interested in the partnership manifestation group that I have going, um, we start September 30th and it's a two day workshop. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I'm giving you a ton of resources and all of the details are in the description box. I'm gonna include the link and everything like that so you can go check it out, all the details. Like day one is about belief systems, forgiveness, self-care. Day two is about actually crafting your manifestation and making sure that you're using proper manifestation language to attract nothing but the best. Um, and then if you're looking to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you're welcome to book a session with me. The link is in the description below. If you'd like a single question reading, I'll include the link for that as well. Make sure that you follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm always adding extra content on there and I so, so, so appreciate you and I will see you next time.